we're going to build a minimalist application and run it in six and a half minutes. We want to give you a feel for what it's like to build a low-code process application the WebCon way. As we launch Designer Studio, let's review what we're going to do. Someone's going to submit a request. Someone will review that request and either approve or reject it. Let's expand this to full screen. And the very first thing we need to do is to create a new application. We're going to give the application a name, in this particular case, Request Management. And the process that's inside of it is Change Requests, which involves a form called Change Request. We'll give it an acronym, which is good for numbering. And then finally, a workflow name, Change Request Review. Now, the application has one process in it now. The process has a workflow and a form associated with it. It can also have reports, start buttons, dashboards, and other things associated with it too. We're gonna start with the workflow called Change Request Review. And let's zoom out a little bit and make a little room. These blocks are called steps or states or stages or statuses. So we're gonna move from registration to being accepted and the act of changing it is called submit. Except when we submit, we're really going to send it to a manager review stage. And if the manager approves it, it'll become accepted. If the manager chooses to reject it, it will be canceled. So you're moving from step to step. And what we want to do now is configure the transition, the path between two steps. This one is called submit. And since it's a manager review, we need to assign responsibility for this workflow to the superior. And with a checkbox, we can automatically notify them by email. Let's close it and save it. So now we have a workflow. What are we gonna do the workflow on? That would be the form. Let's define the data schema for that form, the form fields. We'll create one form field and we'll call it title. And it's a single line of text already. That's the default, that's good. We need a second field. We'll call that description and we'll make that multiple lines of text. That's enough for this example. Those four fields are going to be laid out in regions. There's a top, a bottom, a left, and a right. And by default, we put things on the left. They'll be rendered responsibly at runtime. But we don't want every field to be visible or editable at every step in the workflow. And that's why we have this field matrix. Along the top, you've got the steps in the workflow. And let's rearrange them into an order I like better. And along the left, you've got the fields in the form. And we're going to check display and require. And then for description, we'll just display it. We won't require it. And now for the manager review step, we'll make everything visible and read only because they're not going to change the request once it's made. They'll just approve it or reject it. Same thing with accepted, same thing with canceled. Let's save. We now have a process with a workflow, a data schema, a form layout, conditional display logic. And now let's customize the button for launching a new form. Now, first thing I want to do is change the name. Starts the default, but I like something a little bit more descriptive. In this case, new request is pretty good. And let's go into configuration and change the description as well. Request is even a little too specific, so let's be a more elaborate new change request. I like that better. Then you choose the process that you're going to run and the form you're going to act on and the workflow you're gonna run the form through, and then save it. The last piece in the puzzle is a report. And in WebCon BPS, a report is a full-blown interactive data view. We'll create a standard table style report. And let's give it a name, typically similar to the process. So change requests is a good one. And let's configure it. We're going to choose the process we're going to report on. That's right, that's good. The default is right. Now we choose the columns and standard columns. We want to keep those. They're actually quite useful. But let's grab some of the form data, at least the title, and get it in there too. Now let's save it and do the final thing that's absolutely necessary, which is to secure this, determine who's got privileges to use it. Because by default, no one can do anything other than the designer and administrators. The first thing to do is to determine who's allowed to use the application at all. I'm going to choose a particular group. And 
for that matter, let's go into the individual change requests process and give that same group the ability to launch new workflow instances. And we'll also pick a particular group of people who have the ability to open and edit all items. Application administrators, basically. Time to save the process. And let's also save the overall application. And we're ready to try it out. Let's go to the portal. Let's refresh it so we can see our new application. We created it under the group active applications. And so let's scroll down and look for it. There it is, request app management. Let's open it up. So you see the button for starting new processes. You see the report, which is showing no instances at the moment. So let's click on that new request button. And there's our form. Let's put in some values for title and for description and submit it. And if we look in the report, we'll see that it's in the manager review step and it's assigned to someone named Alice. This is Alice's mailbox and she sees the notification with a link to go to the element. So I'll open it up, take a look at the form, look it over and realize, sure, we can approve it. Let's click it. And now let's go back to the original requester, refresh it, and we'll see that it's accepted. In fact, if we open it and take a look, we can see the steps it went through and where it is now. And if we take a look at the history, we can see exactly who did what when. And that's it. We built an application and ran through it in six and a half minutes, which is great, but we left out a lot. If you go to community.webcon.com, you can find a lot more information about a lot more features and functionalities. And if you'd like to see more YouTube content with walkthroughs of custom emails, task management, reporting and dashboards, change management, structured deployment, business rules, it's all there. So thanks for watching and come back soon.